is Mount Keen is the most easterly Munro in Scotland and at 939 meters tall it's a popular mountain and most people climb it from the southeast in Glen Esk from Angus. However uh, today I climbed it from the northeast and you approach it via Glen Tanner and uh, this is close to the village of Aboyne. Um, now in relation to Aberdeen, it's about 30 miles to the west along Royal D side. So we're going to go along to the track and see what conditions are like. Well, here I am in Glen Tanner car park and this is going to be in the first instance a uh, bike ride um, up Glen Tanner uh, to the bottom of Mount Keen and uh, then we hike up to the top. So let's uh, exit the car park. So we uh, cross this bridge right here and turn right. I think we do. So um, we cross the bridge and then we go along the uh, south side of the uh, river. Uh, in the first instance. Right, here we go. Now I'm on a track. So, we go this way until a point where we uh, turn right, cross over the river again. So I took a diversionary route which went along a footpath. I wanted to stick uh, close to the river because I didn't quite know where all the tracks went but I rejoined the track and we passed the uh, estate house on the north side of the bank so now we get to this junction here and uh, we cross this bridge so we'll be turning right and now we uh, see that footpath sign there And then I believe we turn left at this stage. Looks like a good candidate. So this is uh, uh, the track which goes up Glen Tanner. And uh, previously I've walked this about uh, 12 years ago now. How time flies. Um, and it's a long walk. So this time I'm cycling and uh, it should reduce the length of time it takes to uh, do the approach and the exit. So let's uh, follow this forest, see where it goes. So we are approaching this hut here. This is uh, called Halfway Hut and uh, I suppose it's a bit of encouragement for ourselves. I think there's still about uh, two kilometers of uh, uh, cycling through the forest and then we should be out into an open glen at that stage. So let's uh, carry on. Well, it uh, looks like we are about to emerge out of the forest. I can start to see uh, open ground beyond the trees. Yes. So south side of the river is now clear. Okay, so Mount Keen is uh, up the glen and around the corner to the left and you can't see it at the moment but now we've got open moorland to enjoy so i crossed over the a bridge uh, to go on the south side of the river and we're coming over coming up to a bridge now and we cross back over so on the left you can now see uh, Mount Keen rising up 
It's got a, a little dusting of snow on the mountain top, and uh, yeah, a little bit of winter coming back. Um, it's definitely been, uh, as I mentioned before, quite uh, quite snowy, but uh, the strength of the sun at this time of the year is such that uh, the snow ablates and melts very very readily the the strength of the sun is just too 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 great even if the air temperature is below freezing point so mount keen i first climbed it 1998 i was on holiday and i did the walk from balata you can do a footpath um, from balata it's more up and down but it is shorter than it is from uh, glen Glen Tanner in uh, a Boyne. Um, and I subsequently had the privilege of uh, living in Ballater 2008 into 2009. It's an amazing place to live. And to live in a place where I, that I once went through as part of my holidays, I think is a great privilege. So, um, I think it's probably about 10 more minutes of cycling and then we drop the bike and uh, get the walking stick out. It's a very gradual ascent, this track from Glen Tanner. And uh, I think you start at about 180 meters. And you end up, I think the altitude here is probably about 400 meters. And there's no, you don't get out of breath on this track. So here, coming up on the right, this is the junction uh, for the footpath with Ballata. Here we go. So, follow the signs for Glen Esk, and you'll get quite close to the summit. I think I'll just leave my bicycle just off the bridge. So the first time I did this route, I was camping right here and it was about one and a half hours round trip up to the top. So not too sure if I'll keep up with that this uh, 23 years later. Right, time to get off the bike. So that's where I've come from. So got pleased with that. Time to get the walking stick out now. So I'm now on foot and uh, first quarter, first thing to do is uh, cross this bridge. Seems to be quite a modern bridge and it definitely looks like it's uh, less than 20 years old, tubular structure like that. It's a very well uh, constructed path going up the top and uh, I think uh, Mount Keen looks quite impressive from this angle. So I'm about halfway up now and uh, the wind's uh, slowly uh, picking up now. I'd say it's uh, a moderate wind. And uh, looking back the other way, um, you can see it's a, a very well-made footpath and uh, certainly we're rising above the, uh, the eastern hills now, which is encouraging. So we've uh, risen up to the shoulder of uh, Mount Keen and uh, the, uh, the view has really opened out. Um, so the most prominent local summit is uh, Loch Nagar. And uh, we'll have a, a bigger view, a bigger look at the summit. But this is what I'm faced with now. It's a final steep rise up and it's the steepest section. So it's gonna be a bit of uh, huff and puff, but as you can see, the footpath is uh, very well graded. Okay, so here I am. This is my site of the uh, summit for the first time. Okay, final footsteps to the summit of Mount Keen. Quite a heave, quite a heave ho getting up there from 
where I left the bicycle. There. All right. One other person coming to the summit. Okay, let's do my 360. Over here we've got Khan Elisted, part of the Glen Shee Hills. Then over here we've got two domed snowy tops. I think that's Glass Mole and Khan Clemain. Um, then we've got uh, Broad Cairn, which has got a big uh, crag. Then we've got uh, Loch Nagar, looking into the uh, the Cairngorms. Uh, we've got uh, Beneverd, Ben Arn over here. Okay, so this is Morven over here. And then we've got the Buck of Cabrac. We've got uh, Tapanoff. Benahi. Looking east to Mount Batak. And you can see. Yes. And Glenesk. Hello there. So that's the summit of Mount uh, Keen Climbed. It's uh, been, uh, I started out at about, um, what was it? About nine o'clock. So it took two and a half hours to get up here uh, by bicycle and walking. Um, so it's time to uh, head back down and uh, get out of this cold wind. It's uh, really uh, a bit chilly, but um, I didn't feel like uh, wearing my jacket today. Um, so it should get a lot warmer when I get back down there. Um, but absolutely cracking view uh, up here and uh, not as much uh, sunshine as uh, last week but uh, still very good. Okay so heading back down the uh, footpath to the bicycle so it took about an hour to get up here um, so I'm reckoning it will probably take uh, considerably less time to get back down to the bike so maybe uh, 45 minutes I guess um, so I'm definitely slower compared to uh, 23 years ago but I, I will say in my defense uh, 23 years ago when I climbed this hill I did have a, thunder, a, a thunderstorm snapping at my heels and that does encourage you to go faster um, I was dead keen to climb this uh, Munro, I, I didn't live in the area at all. I was living down in uh, uh, Manchester, went to university there. And um, going up to these places uh, was uh, quite a considerable undertaking. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely uh, was a, a lot keener to uh, make it to the top before uh, the thunderstorm came along. But as it turned out, the thunderstorm missed, so. Um, it was just good exercise, but uh, I definitely, uh, if you want to beat your record times at anything, having a thunderstorm snapping at your heels is definitely uh, uh, a good thing to have. So, that's uh, the, uh, the walk nearly finished. I'm uh, coming up to the, uh, the bridge one more time, and uh, from that point on, it's going to be... Uh, back on the saddle and then uh, get back down to the car. Um, as you can see, I've got my hood up. Um, I quite like wearing my sun hat at the same time as uh, having some warm headgear. It uh, means I don't get quite so much glare inside my, uh, my glasses, especially when they've uh, gone photochromic like they have right now. Bicycle time. So back on the saddle, I'm about uh, three kilometers down. Uh, despite the headwind, uh, I'm making reasonable progress and uh, here's the, uh, the bridge crossing over the River Tanner. I'm not too sure if it's really a river at this, uh, at this stage. There 
we go. So on to the forest next. So back into the uh, forest now. Just uh, my last uh, point of uh, exit. And uh, we've got a bit of uh, downhill now, so I can uh, freewheel a little bit, which is quite nice. So next stop, uh, I guess halfway house. So here we've got uh, halfway hut. So less than 50% of the uh, cycling done now. Next stop, the car. Well, this is the road I came from, and that took the south side of the uh, the river Tainar. And uh, this is the, uh, the north side, and this is what signposted. So I'm gonna go this way and uh, see where this ends up. So this is where the forest track emerges. And we turn left here. It's been a, a bit of uphill, it's been a bit of a huff and a puff. I think I prefer the south side. Well, I've just turned right onto this uh, stretch of track. Uh, the right of way does weave quite a intricate path through here. So we'll just see uh, where it ends up. Seems like we're not too far away from the public road now. Right, here we are, public road. We just uh, cycle along here then. Okay, not too far to the car now. I can see them coming up on the left. So that's where the uh, car park is. Just all there. A lot busier now than uh, when I started. Thank you for accompanying me on my walk and bike hike. And uh, thanks for watching. It's uh, time for the rest of my lunch. So I think it's still pretty early. Not a bad uh, time.